Welcome back. Now we're on sub element five of the technician exam. And part B is definitely heavy in some math here. So we're going to be doing a lot of math and conversions. And let's, let's just go ahead and rip the band-aid off. Let's go to question one. Question one says, how many milliampers is 1.5 amperes? Now, a milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp. So if you go down and look at your answers, you have all kinds of milliamps. You could convert each one. So 15 milliampers, if you divide 15 by 1,000, would give you 0 0.015 amps. Well, that doesn't equal what they're asking for. But there's another way you can do it. A milliamp is equal to, or a thousand milliamps is equal to one amp. So if you're converting amps to milliamps, you've got to multiply times a thousand, and that gives you 1,500 milliamps, or milliampers as they call it on the test. And you can look at the chart to the left, and you can see the relationship of a unit. They call it the base, but we're going to call it the unit. In this case, our unit was amperes. So for question number two, the unit is hertz. And they give you it, which is equal to 1,500,000 hertz. Now, I've given you some conversions up here. Kilo is 1,000, mega is 1 million, and giga is a billion. So I've done several conversions here because you have multiple answer choices. You have kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and then kilohertz again. So the first one is 1.5 million divided by 1,000 will convert it to kilohertz. That gives you 1,500 kilohertz. Now that just happens to be the right answer. But let's pretend you didn't know. 1.5 million divided by a million to convert to megahertz is 1.5 megahertz. Well, that answer choice is not down there. And the last one that we can convert to is gigahertz. Because if you notice, they have two kilohertz. So it's got a, it, it, you've already done that. We have a kilohertz, 1,500 kilohertz. Now, 1 1.5 million divided by a billion comes out to be a decimal. And that is 0 0.0015 gigahertz. And so we found our answer. Your answer is 1,500 kilohertz. Now, the thing about this is I'm trying to teach you how to find these answers and not just memorize it. If you mem memorize it, that's on you. But wouldn't it be nice to go ahead and know how to find these answers? So it takes a little bit of extra learning, and the higher you go up in the testing, yes, it gets ridiculous. Alrighty, so question number three says, which is equal to one kilovolt. Now, if you have a kilovolt, most likely you have used the word kilo before. Like, I got 5k in the bank. That would be $5,000 assumed. So, with 1,000 volts, that is a kilovolt. 1,000 kilo is 10 to the third power kilovolts. So, the next question says which is equal to one microvolt. Now if you look at the chart to the left there, a micro is 10 to the negative 6, which is a millionth. So which one of these answer choices is equal to one microvolt? So a microvolt is one one millionth of a volt. So you can just remember that if you want to because that is a direct conversion. So if you had 500 microvolts, that'd be 500 one millionths of a volt. Alrighty, so let's go to question number five and six. Looking at this question, it says which is equal to 500 milliwatts? Now, milli says divide by a thousand. If you look at the chart, it says in the very center, milli, divide by a thousand. So if you want to convert to watts, divide by a thousand. I've done it both ways. I multiplied times 0 0.001 watts, gives you a half a watt, or 500 milliwatts divided by a thousand is 
also 0.5 watts. And that is your answer. For question number six, it says, what, which is equal to 3,000 milliampers? Well, if you look, a milli is 10 to the negative 3, which means divide by 1,000 for that unit. So if you take 3,000 and divide by 1,000, you get 3 amperes, and amperes is the base unit. And that is the answer to question number six. So let's go to number seven and eight. Question number seven says, which is equal to 3.525 megahertz? Now, there are multiple ways to do this. This gets a little more complicated when you start to convert from one scientific notation to the other. And it just depends on what direction you're going in. If you wanted to, you could take mega, which is a million, and multiply 3.525 times a million, and that will give you 3,525,000 in a base unit of hertz. So if you needed to find kilohertz, that is 10 to the third power. So to get kilohertz, you would knock off three decimal places. You divide by a thousand, and that would give you three thousand five hundred and twenty-five kilohertz. So these conversions are a little more difficult. So if you're going from a million to a thousand, you would need to multiply the megahertz times a thousand to convert it to kilohertz, because on the chart to go down from one million to a thousand. If you're going down on the chart, you're dividing. If you're going up on the chart, you're multiplying. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at question number eight, which is equal to one million picofarads. Now, if you look down there, the last one that I highlighted is pico, and that is 10 to the negative 12th. That is a trillionth, or a millionth of a millionth. So, picofarads means to divide by that big, 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 big number right there, a trillionth. So you could take one million and divide it by a trillionth and then multiply that number times a million and that would move it up because you're moving up to micro, you need to multiply. Remember, you divide going down and multiply going up to get uh, to change from one scientific notation to another. But what I did here, picofarads is 10 to the negative 12th. To get 10 to the negative 6, I'm moving six decimal places. So that would be one microfarad. Now, you can try to practice some of these. If you're really interested in learning how to make these conversions, you can try to practice, practice making up some of these of your own. Like you might say, what is three milliamps in microamps? Try to make that conversion. I'll give you a hint. You divide by some number off of this chart, and then go use an online calculator or conversion chart or conversion calculator to make that conversion and check and see if your answer is correct. So let's go to question number nine. Now we are making a change. I actually have a calculator because I'm going to show you how this works. So you can guesstimate some changes if power doubles. So if you look at this chart over here and see times by where it says two, a doubling in power is about a change of three decibels. It's very close to three decibels. They've rounded this off and I'll show you on the calculator in a minute. Now, if power is halved, then you look down here where it says 0.5, that's a change of negative three decibels. And you can go either way. If you have a change of negative three decibels, then you're gonna multiply times 0.5. And if it doubles, you multiply that by two. Now, if you look up here, 10 times log of the wattage, because we're looking at watts here, the second number of watts, I could have used a P, and I probably should have used a P. I apologize for that. Um, it should be P2 over P1. 
So this is your change in power. So let's take a look on the calculator. And it says that we have 5 watts going to 10 watts. So we're going to take a change. 10 watts divided by 5 watts is going to give us the power doubled. Now, you can use the logarithmic on your calculator and hit log. And that's going to give you the logarithmic change. And then you multiply times 10. And there is your three decibels of change. So three decibels is also a doubling in power. Let's try T5B10. Now we're going from 12 watts to 3 watts. Again, I, I made a mistake on my drawing. It should be P2 power 2 over power 1. And I believe it's too late for me to go back to change my image. Um, it should be P2 over P1. So that is your change in power. So if you look at number 10, it says you're going from 12 watts to 3 watts. So your change is going to be 3 divided by 12. So now you have gone and reduced your power to a quarter of what it was. And then you use log. And then you multiply times 10, and that gives you negative six decibels so negative six decibels if you look it's not even on the chart over here <laughs> but negative six decibels has brought it down to um, a fourth so if you look at six decibels on the chart you can see it says four so if you're going to go negative six decibels it, you just take the inverse it's going to be a fourth or 0.25 okay the last one of these that you have to see on this test which decibel value represents a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts? Now, I'm going to show you two ways. Let's say that you knew that um, going a, a doubling or having a power is either plus 3 decibels or minus 3 decibels. Let's say that you start out at 20 watts and you multiply times 2. There's 3 decibels. Then you multiply that times 2. There are 6 decibels. Then you multiply times 2 again. That's another 6 decibels. Now we're at 9 decibels. Now if you go to 12 decibels by multiplying by 2 again, you get 320, dec uh, 320 watts. Well, we're only looking for 200 watts. So our answer is between 9 and 12 decibels. Well, we know at 12 decibels of a change, that'd be 320 watts, so that get that would lead us to A. Now, let me show you the correct way, the other way. That is a correct way of estimating or guesstimating. So we have 200 watts. That's the second power we're given, divided by 20 watts. So we have increased our power by 10 times. So then you're going to do your log, that gives you a log of 1, and then you multiply times 10, and it's still 10. So that's one of the rare ones that actually works out as the same. How dare they do that to us? Okay, so this notation is um, a nice way to kind of visualize on a chart what these decibel values mean. Again, your formula is 10 times the log of your change in power. And dumb old me put W for watts. It should have been P for power. Um, that is the unit, and watts is what it's measured in. So, hey, you know, forgive me. Okay, let's go. We are now at question 12 and 13, and guess what? We are back to scientific notation again. Okay, this time we're converting our frequencies to different frequencies. And I drew them out. So 28,400 28, kilohertz is the same as 28,400,000 hertz. And you can see if you wanted to convert to kilohertz, you divide by 1,000. 
and that would give you 28,400 kilohertz. Well, dang, that's where we started. This is not one of the answers. So then we have three choices of megahertz, which is 10 to the 6. Megahertz is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that gives us 28.400 megahertz. And that is your answer for number 12. And now the last one, which is equal to 2,425 megahertz. I went ahead and wrote this one out. I almost can't even read this one. That's, <laughs> we have, um, let's see, thousand, million, billion. You have two trillion, 425 million hertz. Now, that's why we use scientific notation for this, because these are some big dang numbers, and a picofarad is a really, really tiny number. So, um, a this is going to show you, if you wanted to convert to kilohertz, you divide by 1,000, and 2,425 megahertz would give you 2,425,000 kilohertz. Now, if you wanted to go to megahertz, well, you can follow the next color line over. That gives you 2,425 megahertz. Well, daggone, that's where we started. And the last one, gigahertz, that we have to choose from, and that's what we're looking at. The answer choices down below are all in gigahertz. That gives you, and I drew that dotted line down so you can see, we're dividing by 10 to the ninth power. So that's nine sets of zeros, that's 2.425 gigahertz. So this scientific notation stuff, I remember I hated it when I was in school. I've got a little bit more of a grasp and even sometimes I have to go back and look at this chart to remind myself, hey, where are we going with this? Okay, so I really, 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 really hope that this has helped you out immensely in your studies. The next couple of sub-elements for uh, element two, which is the technician exam as it stands right now, is, is quite a bit of math and converting pictures to uh, other things. They're symbols. So there's going to be a lot of memorization here. Uh, you can memorize the answers and be done once with the test, or you can memorize how to find the answers, and then no matter what is on the test, shouldn't throw you. So if you want to study a basic electronics course, you could find books at your local bookstore if you want to go ahead and, and learn a little bit about some basic electronics, or you can save money and just go to the web and find you a reputable source and learn basic electronics and learn some of the terms and the vocabulary, and that will help you on these next couple of sections. I'm Robbie, W1RCP, and we'll see you on the next sub-element.